Oh, hello, you've just caught me enjoying one of my favorite beverages here, tea. Do you know what's not my favorite though? That unsightly scale that builds up at the bottom of my kettle. I've heard you can use vinegar to get rid of it. But do you know what else I don't like? Wasting vinegar. So if only there was some way for me to be able to figure out the minimum amount of vinegar that I would have to use to get rid of that scale. Hmm. Now in order to answer this interesting question, we have to first review stoichiometry. And up until this point, we dealt with masses and we took the mass of a particular substance, we used the molar mass to get the number of moles of that particular substance, we used the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation to figure out the number of moles of unknown that we're looking for, and then we used the molar mass of that unknown to figure out the mass. So mass to moles, moles to moles, moles to mass. Now with solutions, we're probably not going to be provided with the mass of solute that's in that particular solution. What's more likely is that we'll be given the concentration and the volume of that particular solution. But if we know the concentration and the volume, we can then figure out the number of moles. Remember, n equals c times v. And then once we figure out the number of moles of solution that we're given, we can then use the balanced chemical equation to use the mole ratio to figure out the number of moles of whatever it is we're looking for. And then in most cases, we're probably going to have to find the mass, so we could use the molar mass of whatever it is we're looking for to figure out its mass. So instead of mass to moles, moles to moles, moles to mass, we're probably going from volume to moles, moles to moles, and moles to mass. So there is really just one little tweak in this process. And in most cases, what we're looking for in a solution stoichiometry problem is the mass of precipitate that's produced. So you're going to have to review solubility and figure out what the precipitate's going to be most times. That is, if we're given a balanced chemical equation, and some of you might recognize this from our limiting and excess reagent vodcast, we're typically going to have two aqueous reactants and a, find a precipitate of a product. That is, we're going to have to figure out what the mass is of the solid that's produced in this reaction. So let's just quickly review the steps that we learned in the last vodcast on limiting and excess reagents and then see how we can apply this to solution stoichiometry. So in our previous examples, we're given the mass of one or all of our reactants. We then have to use a conversion factor like molar mass to figure out the number of moles. And if we know the number of moles of all the reactants, we have to establish which one is limiting. That is, which one's going to determine or dictate how much product is produced. And in order to establish this, we have to use what I call the BOSS test, or limiting reagent test, to figure out which one is limiting. That is, we're going to have to take the coefficient from the balanced chemical equation for each one of those reactants, divide by that coefficient, and whichever value is lower, that establishes our limiting reagent. Now remember, this is a calculation that only establishes our limiting reagent. We never use these values again. I like to think about them as toilet paper. We use it once and then we never use it again. So we go back and use the number of moles of our limiting reagent to figure out the number of moles of the product being produced here. And we use the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation to do that. And then we use the molar mass to figure out the mass. So in a solution stoichiometry problem, rather than the mass and molar mass, that is mass divided by molar mass to give us the number of moles, we are going to be given volume and concentration. And notice that it's volume times concentration. Even though we're setting it up in the same way, it's not divided by because we know N equals C times V. Again, N equals C times V. So we're multiplying the volume times the concentration to get the number of moles. And then once we've done that, the process is identical to previous processes. If we're trying to figure out the mass of precipitate produced, and in most cases that's exactly what we're trying to do, we are going to take the volume times the concentration to figure out the number of moles. We're going to establish which one is our limiting reagent using the BOSS test, and from there we're just using the mole ratio to get from the moles of our limiting reagent to the moles of our precipitate. We'll use the molar mass of our precipitate, and we'll find the mass of precipitate produced. That is the theoretical mass of precipitate that we should expect in this reaction. Easy, right? If you can do the mass stoichiometry problems, mass to moles, moles to moles, moles to mass, really there's only one little twist right at the beginning for these types of problems. But there are some things that we have to remember for solution stoichiometry and in fact for most stoichiometry problems. The first thing, the key to these types of problems is the balanced chemical equation. Without an appropriately balanced chemical equation, your mole ratios will not be correct, your coefficients will not be correct, which could potentially throw off your limiting reagent calculations. 
The second thing is the conversion. We have to be aware that this is a solution. We cannot fit a square peg into a round hole and then try and figure out the mass of the solution somehow and divide by molar mass. Please do not fall into that trap. If you're given concentration and volume, use N equals C times V to figure out the number of moles. If you can figure out the number of moles of both reactants, yes, you have to do the Boss test. You have to calculate the limiting reagent. And then of course, like any stoichiometry problem, you have to use the bridge from known to unknown. That is, we have to use the mole ratio to figure out the number of moles of product being produced. So you're telling me that if I were to be able to figure out the mass of calcium carbonate in my kettle, I could then use the molar mass of calcium carbonate to figure out the number of moles, use the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation to figure out the number of moles of acetic acid that I would need to neutralize all of that calcium carbonate, then use the concentration of the vinegar to then determine the volume of vinegar that I would need to get rid of all that scale? That's so easy. Well, I'm glad we were able to put out that fire. And hopefully after watching this video, you have a better understanding of solution stoichiometry problems. Remember, it's really only one step different than the previous stoichiometry problems that we've looked at to this point. So I know after practicing this a few times, you'll all be pros at solution stoichiometry. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Did you not like the video? Was there something that seemed like it was a little off? Well, either way, we want to hear about it. So like us or leave a comment in the section below as to things that we could change or improve. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube or follow us on Twitter.